It's time for some overreaction theater. Let's do it. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. Today's comment is going to be a roll call. We haven't done this in a while. Let us know in the comment section if you are an everydayer. Just put the word everydayer in the comments. And if you want to add anything in there, uh, including uh, where you're listening from or uh, your Cubs takes, that would be great as well. Today's Friday episode, as we were a a five-day-a-week show again this week, is presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. New customers join today. And you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, five, we're going to be five days a week at, for, for the rest of the year, dude. Indefinitely. Yeah, yeah until uh, yeah, until, get, until uh, next December. Get used to us. You know what I yeah. mean? And if, if, if you're not already used to us, get used to us. Yeah. No, we want to take this journey with you. And, it's our time. Uh, you guys are all my friends. We're inside three weeks of opening day, and what's the once the season kicks off, it's another uh, another experience around here. So pu- pull up the bar stool and let's uh, let's talk Cubs today. We are debuting a segment called Over Reaction Theater. I have drafted uh, six different claims here uh, that we're going to go back and forth on and decide: is this an overreaction? Or not. Sam, another good week of shows, and I I am excited for this segment. Let's do it. Christopher Morell will lead the Cubs in home runs. And and I and my response is either that that could happen or that's an overreaction. Is that an overreaction or no? No, that's not an overreaction. Right. And and I and I'm not saying that 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 means that it's gonna happen. I'm right. just saying that I don't think that that's an overreaction to make that prediction. No, I think his biggest competition is going to be that right fielder Seiya Suzuki. Yes. I think I think he might hit a large amount of home runs, but it is definitely definitely not an overreaction to say that Christopher Morel could lead this team in home run balls. Well, and I'm into the Seiya Suzuki jersey number thing. He's got to hit. Jersey number plus this year, so 27 plus. I agree. I think uh, Morell, as of right now, I would say this is not an overreaction. And then I would go as far as to say he does lead the Cubs and homers. He's somewhere in the 30s, maybe even the mid-30s. Oh. Suzuki's in the high 20s, and we're <laughs> cooking with gas. Well, if Christopher Morell hits his jersey number, this could be a 90-loss club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want that. That's oh, sure. man, am I not funny? Um, but I do think in oh, terms of the God power man. category, you know, seeing that. Man, is it uh, colder outside than I thought? Yeah, it's it's turning a little bit, but I think it's going to be fine. Uh, I, I do think that for as much as the power is lacked maybe a little bit so far this spring, um, you know, we're going to start to see that even out a little bit. Morel, Morel has looked pretty good uh, with the slug at the plate. Yeah. I'm excited to watch this club at 705. Listen, yeah. I got a little I got a prediction for you. One of my, you know, because we're recording this before the spring training game. Okay. Michael Bush will hit his first spring training home run tonight. All right. Well, let's let me write that down. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh yeah. Shota Imanaga will lead the Cubs in strikeouts. Huh. I, I don't think that can be looked at as an overreaction. Okay. I mean, there's a one in five chance. Um right. to me. My my spin zone. Can I throw one at you right back? Yeah, because he is a strikeout pitcher. Overreaction. Shote Imanaga is not going to be good. I I really don't think it's it's an overreaction just because of the adjustment to a new league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it goes Un- both ways. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I think I need to see. Like I've only seen two three innings out of him, so it's like. 
No, and, and the Cubs don't have a lot of strikeout pitchers. Like he's basically just competing against Steele. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So. I think it's a slight overreaction just because there are still some some question marks about his transition. But he might Matthew, he um, could be bad and still lead the team in strikeouts. Wow. Well that's I'd have to think about that. No, you don't. I'm I don't know you, if I like that. I'm telling you right now that you don't. Yeah. Well, maybe Tyone leads this club in K's. Right, and 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 maybe tomorrow morning. Maybe he pitches up, sometime. And maybe tomorrow morning I wake up. I'm six foot five, two hundred and fifteen pounds, and and the Bulls give me a call and I help us in the play in. Yeah. Well, don't get any fights. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, Miguel Amaya will be the starting catcher by the end of the year. Ooh, that's a good one, and I'm going to say over reaction. Reaction. Yeah. That's a really I a because I think he is going to be the starter. I have a couple too, by the way. I'd like to say, yeah. Uh, okay, well then, tell us why, Matthew. It's your program. Well, too. he's young. He's uh, he's got good comfort with the pitching staff so far. Uh, you know, he is the future catcher of this franchise. As and far you just as think Jan Gomes isn't going to hit this year? Is what you're trying to say? Maybe, maybe. And of course, he's a good stead of the staff as well. But. Um, you know, Jan Gomes was one of our most clutch performers last season. That's going to be a pretty big jump for Mr. Amaya to take. Right. I think that's going to be hard to replicate for the the veteran Gomes. Yeah. And I, I think Amaya starts to boost his profile, and I don't think it's an overreaction at all. And I, I actually think it happens. Okay. So we disagree on one. What do you got? Oh, I, I, oh, I think mine should be last. Oh, okay. I think my because mine's going to really upset some people. I got a couple more about playing time. Okay. Uh, Luke Little will be the main setup man to add Bernal's alive at the end of the year. Mm. I think I, it's an overreaction. I'm going to say overreaction. Yeah, that, okay. that would be a pretty big jump. He'd have to jump Merriweather and Hector Neris in order to do that. Right. Um, you know, there's still so many questions with the bullpen that we're just, we're not going to have a great idea about this bullpen until the middle of May. We're just not. Right. You know, ho- hopefully they're, they're good. I like Luke Little, but I don't like him that much. Yeah, the other Cubs spring night game this week, he did look electric. Um, But again, what do you take appearance by appearance? I know so many fans like this kid, uh, and for good reason. Um, You know, let's see how he does the rest of the spring. He was in my opening day roster projection that uh, we published for Thursday. And uh, yeah, I think going up that many rungs of the ladder is a little bit of a a reach, but I hope hopefully he does have a defined role right. out there. And speaking of electric, shout out to the late great Benjamin Franklin. Uh, it's a shame that he, <laughs> he he never he never won a presidency. All right, give me give. Let's go two more. Matt Shaw will get the most starts at third base this year. Yeah, uh, so I I have one on Shaw, so I'm not going to do that now. Uh, that's an overreaction. Um, okay. he, he's not going to be up. I I don't think till June or July, so it'd be too hard for it. But he's going to be up here at some point. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right now it is an overreaction. I'm starting to warm up to Matt Shaw coming up in June. Um, although I'm kind of tired of these arbitrary dates. Uh, we yeah. did that last year with Morell and Mervis. Well, May 1st, call him up. No. Huh. If they deserve a call up and the Cubs have a need, it should just happen. Okay. Are you ready we for mine? We don't need to say June 15th for Matt Shaw. Please stop. Are you ready for mine? Yeah. You might want to take your headphones off for this. Well, then I'm not going to be able to hear it. That's true. Go Cubs. Folks, please don't yell at me. I don't believe this, but I just, I think it's time to just at least put it out there. Matt, is it an overreaction to say that you're starting to have some slight concerns about Pete Crow Armstrong's ceiling as a baseball player. I'll let you go. I would say it is an overreaction. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, based on, you know, what we've seen so far, it is ultimately a smaller sample. Right. I get it that there would be um, maybe a little bit of trepidation, but in terms of concerns of him, his ceiling, of being an elite defender and, and, and a contributor offensively, especially on the base pass, uh, I would say that's an overreaction. Okay, I agree. I agree. Just was reading some stuff and, 
You know, I've seen a couple of things. I, I would like to see him, you know, he needs have to mature. Yeah, right. I, okay. On the baseball field. I'm not saying off the field. Well, we don't know him off the field. Well, true. Um, but everything we talk about. Are he's put together. Yeah, no, I, everything we talk about is on the baseball field. If you clarify right. that, we got to clarify everything. Yeah, I don't know why he did that. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Well, people are sensitive. No. So, <laughs> no uh, way. <laughs> but, but on the field, you know, he's still getting picked. He's uh, losing balls in the sun. He's not making great swing decisions. Right. He needs to grow up. Yeah, right. Can I do one more? Yeah. It's about the gentleman that we just spoke of. Is it an overreaction to say that Matt Shaw is the best prospect in this system? Do, 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 Ooh, do, that's do, a tough do, one, do, especially do, when you do, hear my next one. Illinois, Iowa, Sunday, 6 uh, p.m. Best prospect in the system? I'm going to say it's not an overreaction based on how the bats it, played this spring. I don't think it is. And how he debuted professionally last summer. And it's so crazy because I know people are people are going to be like, hey, Sam, why are you talking about PCA? PCA is two hits away from having a better spring than Matt Shaw. It's the eye test, folks. Yeah. Uh, Matt Shaw just looks like he could absolutely sting it. You know what I mean? <laughs> just grooved in there, little boom. I actually think there's one other player – that has even caught our eyes a little more. Can you give me a hint? Overreaction or not? Owen Casey. Owen Casey is the next star player on the north side. Overreaction. Okay. I think the next star player. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm done. I'm not. I'm not putting this type of pressure on Matt Shaw. I'm not mentioning his name anymore. Okay. Wow. That is a lot. Yeah. I. I think Casey. Uh, I don't think it's an overreaction. Yeah, but see, he's got. The okay. goods to be a star player. Oh, but here's the thing, though. He does. Here's my counter. By the to way, that. he's ten for twenty entering Thursday's. So action. that's like, like to me, would you have said that if he was five for twenty? That's part of the segment, fam. Yeah, I. <laughs> he's hitting five hundred. Bring him up. But no, no, that's see, this this is too much overreaction, Theta. We're supposed to be we're supposed to be saying if it's an overreaction, not Owen doing. Owen Casey's the next star player, dude. Because I'm going to put to that me, as the title to me, the no, please to, 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 to me, the beautiful <laughs> thing about this take is like my Matt Shaw take. He actually has only hit like 240. So I'm just looking right, at well, it. He from, stinks. I, I, <laughs> I'm just looking at it from a pure, a pure scouters brain. Right. You know, I can't wait to see him in the lineup here in about a half hour. I'm going to have myself. Oh, oh, by the way, you know what? I'll save this for best and worst of the week. Oh, I see. All right. Well, that was fun. It's always fun. This is a fun show. I hope people enjoy it. I believe that's been the separator. Uh, not only information, but entertainment. Congrats. Coming up next. Jalen Johnson with an extension. MLB Pipeline has released a new prospects list. Let's go over it. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor Meals. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted. Dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, Use there are more Love it. than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Plus, it's flexible for your schedule. You could get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. And you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. Go to factormeals.com slash MLB 50 That's code LockedOnMLB50 at factormeals.com to get 50% off. MLB Pipeline put out their latest prospects list. I do have the top 10 in front of me. And then I also added in uh, those in the top 30 because the prospects list is top 30 on MLB Pipeline. So top 10 plus those in the top 30 that have an ETA of this season. You know what's funny? Yeah. I have I haven't seen it yet, and I don't think I know. I, I bet you I couldn't even get the top six right. Really? Because I think the like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, I feel like has been pretty um, conclusive. Is Jordan Wick still considered a prospect on there? Yeah, he's ninth. Oh, so I wouldn't even. Um, do you want to guess the six? It's pretty. It's pretty conclusive. I thought. Uh, PCA. Yeah. Uh, Cade. Right. Shaw. Right. Uh, uh, Alcantara. Yes. That in, that in that order so far. And there's two more. Casey. Right. There's one more, but it's kind of a twist. Triantos. Michael Bush. Oh, Bush. That's right. Triantos is seventh. Okay. Ballesteros eighth. Wicks nine. Jefferson Rojas. Jefferson Rojas. The eighteen-year-old is tenth. Yeah. He. Yeah. They. They really like him. Those in the top thirty that are uh, have an ETA of this year. Ben Brown, Alexander Canario, Matt Mervis, Luke Little, B.J. Murray, Luis Vasquez, and Porter Hodge. So that'll be pipeline. What, what the number, Cubs have a lot of guys that can contribute this year. What number is Canario? Canario's in the teens. Oh, so he's dipped. So is Brown and Mervis. Sure, sure. Um, but this is all this is all good things. You know, I, I do think. I'm starting to call call this a uh, well. It doesn't really gel that well, but like a core five, you know, PCA, yeah. Horton, Casey, Shaw, and Alcantara. Yeah, um, they have looked the part. They have. Yeah, I just think it's dangerous. I think it's a different type of system. Right. Like no I just blue chips. Yeah, I just don't. I think doing that it just puts a label. You know, if two of those guys turn out to be blue chippers, and then all of a sudden Ben Brown well, grows into something, you know, I don't know. It's dangerous for me. Right. Well, how you're talking about Matt Shaw, I might have to give you a call later tonight. Well, you're probably we're probably going to speak at some point tonight because the Chicago Cubs take on the Red Legs at seven oh five Central Time. Well, I I am looking forward to watching that lineup. Uh, oh, and Casey Nick hit. Martini playing on the other side. Uh, uh, Owen, high Casey, school Owen Casey is leading off. I saw that. Nick Martini is not in the lineup for the Red Legs. Okay. I hope, hopefully, he makes it out of camp. We'll see. He should. Casey, Cooper, Bush, Alfaro, Canario, PCA, Bodie, Shaw, and Vasquez, who's having a nice spring. Speaking of overreaction theater, was that Jorge Alfaro in the cleanup spot? Yeah. Uh, okay. I think they're just having some fun. What is council doing? Give us a call. Just kidding. All right. Well, coming up next, uh, we could do best and worst of the week. What do you think, Sam? Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Another product I have. Brand new partner here on Locked On Cubs. That's fantastic, Sam. Fire TV is your your destination, if I could read, uh, for sports in terms of live games, highlights, and in-depth analysis. It offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free at live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college baseball, college basketball tournaments coming up, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Here's one of the kickers. Fire TV has recently created channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, and it's all free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices if you haven't checked out fire tv you should trust us on this to learn more visit amazon.com slash locked on fire tv that's amazon.com slash locked on fire tv best and worst of the week here on locked on cubs as we are rolling along on a friday episode thank you whenever and wherever you may be listening and again if you're an everydayer, please let us know in the comments section or hit us up on X if you're uh, listening to us right now. All right, Sam, I'm going to let you uh, hit first here. My worst of the week, you know, and this is a little bit of a preview. If you if you'd like even a sales pitch to our other program, Unlocked with Matt. And yeah, Sam. let's talk about Unlocked today. 
because if if you find this somewhat entertaining or relatable, you probably would like our excuse me. You probably would like our our other show because we talk about this stuff. Yeah. Before we got on here, I ordered a sandwich. Okay. Not going to say where it's from, obviously. No. Um, turkey, no cheese, mayo, lettuce, tomato, and add pickle. I got the sandwich. I drove home. I opened it up. Oh, cheese no. on there. Cucumbers on there. No, it, the whole sandwich was wrong. Cookie wasn't in there. I, I think basically just got somebody else's order. And, <laughs> you know, mistakes happen. I get it. This happens to me way too much. Too often. And and you know what? I'm starting to pin it on myself because really? I I need to check the check the order before I get it because it was a drive through situation, and, and, and I need to check it. Oh. And, 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 and I, if I have to open it up, I have to open it up. <laughs> open up the wrapper. Yeah, this is ridiculous. My I, now now I gotta we gotta get off. I gotta find a different thing to eat. I, I'm going grocery shopping Saturday. Oh, thank goodness! You know, it's it's just it's happening too much, and and it's it's a problem. And 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 you know, it happened the other night. Anthony was over. I got the I, we did a little Uber Eats situation. Wow. Food was wrong. What? Food was wrong. Oh boy, that's happened more than once in a week. And then I had a couple weeks ago. I had a little delivery, and the guy canceled the order when he was about a minute and a half from my place. He got scared. You know, so just let's just try and clean it up a little bit, please. I'm really enjoying our subscription podcast, Matt and Sam Unlocked. Uh, I'll put the link to it in the episode description. Uh, it really is a great opportunity for us to to grow as podcasters and and do a show that's non-cubs in nature. Uh, we just talk about day to day stuff, week to week, some bears, uh, some basketball, things like that. Um, but would love your support over there. We're we're really close to our opening day goal. We're just a few subscribers away, um, and so uh, I, I will put that link in the episode description and uh, and start running some promos on the audio side again um, because that that's it, it's been really enjoyable to do it. Um, my, my worst of the week is, uh, you know, just reflecting on now that I do feel a hundred percent as of today, mm -hmm. uh, just reflecting on last week, you know, what I thought was, um, just a, a flu, you know, what turned out to be worse. And, uh, I do believe some of it is my, is my doing some of it's not, and I'm, I'm committed to making the changes to, to improve um, mentally and physically, but I, I just look back on it and I go, man, that was, that was not, that was not fun. And my uh, best of the week, yeah. uh, great segues having you back on. Oh, wow. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, it's nice. You know, doing the solo shows. I mean, you know, sometimes people say nice things about them in the comments and I appreciate it, but yeah, but you it, do a it, great job. Yeah. It's just, it, it's a lot different of a dynamic, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not the same as, it, it, as, as the big leagues, you know, it's a little different and okay. it, it's nice to have you back. I'm glad to see you feeling well, better. Appreciate and, that. You know, we're going to be on this 73 win journey together. So. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. It's a joke, folks. Please <laughs> go easy on me. I come in peace. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. I also wanted to give a shout out to my friend, Steve Drain. I drove up to uh, McHenry a couple weeks right. ago, Sam. Yeah. And I was a, a guest on his podcast, which is uh, unpolished. It's called, He's six episodes in with with him and his producer, Alex. Steve actually built a studio in his basement that he's offered to wow. us, Sam. Very uh, cool. To maybe use this summer. It's a deep dive episode uh, on me, on the show, on the business, and much more. I'll, I'll put the link to that. Well, I, well, uh, I'm going to listen to it. Also in this description. So it would have been talk, nice for you to tell me that off the air. But... I talk a lot about the show, but uh, probably too much, honestly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's in there if people want to take a deep dive. And uh, and I'd like to for you to see the studio because I think it would be cool to go down there this summer. Yeah. Uh, maybe for episode 500. That'd be pretty When's cool. When's that? Uh, it's probably a couple of months away. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we will be back on Monday as we are in the five-episode formation uh, talking all – 
things Cubs. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes, and we'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, smash the like button for the algorithm, and leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcasts. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked yes. On Cubs. Locked On Cubs. There is momentum happening here.